Yeah, I'll start with, well, firstly, what a show. <laughs> I'm so pleased to speak to you both today, as I'm sure lots of people are. Um, um, I'll, I'll, start, I'll start with both. I mean, the, the car, there's so many things that are great about this show, and the casting was one of the things that was so spot on. And you'll have taken a punt on some people. There would have been some fortuitous moments where someone pulled out and was subsequently re replaced. But you, you now wouldn't change a thing, and you couldn't imagine anyone else in these roles. Does it feel like, to some degree, with The Wire, that Lady Luck was shining down? It feels like everything just kind of came together <laughs> Nina I'm gonna let you defend Alexa against the <laughs> charge of lady luck <laughs> um well Alexa and Pat Moran who was our uh, Pat was the local Baltimore casting but you know even before that I think David and I had had the advantage of of not being traditional film producers you know we we, we didn't we didn't know what the rules were when we started The Wire. Um, you know, we had just done The Corner before that, but we sort of made it up as we went along. And nobody said, you know, you really shouldn't hire any, you know, directors who don't have TV experience, or, you know, you really shouldn't, you know, hire these guys that don't have a lot of uh, a big acting resume. You know, we, we, we didn't know that. So we, we just uh, sort of went into this. Um, Alexa Fogel is wonderful at casting such a wide net. She just has such an awareness of actors um, all over the world and theater actors and, you know, all, all kinds of actors. So she was really able to bring us a, a great assortment of people. And then Pat was able to bring um, the local actors and, and somehow, um, yeah, the chemistry of putting those, those two groups together, I think uh, really stepped everybody's performances up. And and David, I was I mean, as a show that uh, uh, like I and many others would describe as perfection. But I feel like no writers or creators will ever feel anything they've done is perfect. So with that in mind, if you could change anything about the wire, what, what do you think it would be? We could have used two more episodes the last season, and I'll tell you a funny story about that. Which is in that year, which was two thousand and seven, in that budget year for uh, uh, mm -hmm. HBO, they had greenlit uh, uh, Show Me a Hero as well as the last season of the Wire. And in fact. They greenlit Generation Kill before we we got we got the green light to shoot that last season of The Wire. The Wire was we were trying to claw our way back to getting the green light for one more season, and um, and the compromise was uh, okay. I'm I'm already giving you seven hours of a of a fairly expensive miniseries on on the Iraq War. Can you finish in ten? If you can finish in ten, I'll green light this. That was that was the charge that we were given from uh, Chris Albrecht, who was the head of the network then. And I, you know, that was some horse trading. Uh, and I, I didn't stand on ceremony. I said, thank you. It's 17 hours of production. And, you know, I realized that you have a, you know, it's a larger chunk of the pie and it's not like, no, it's not like anyone's watching our stuff. So, you know, I mean, it was just, um, so I went away with the 10 and, and there were moments writing that the, the 10 where I thought there, there is more you could do here. In, in a number of places. And some of those threads, I mean, I see where, I, I see the branches where we were gonna grow off of the last season. Uh, some of them that, that we, never, we couldn't get to just because of the, uh, and, and to his great credit and, 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 and a great moment of comedy, when the last episode aired, um, I looked in my email a day or two later and there was an, an email from Chris Albrecht who was no longer at HBO at the time but he, he had my email and he wrote, he said, wow, the only thing that could have made that better was two more episodes. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, yeah, I mean, that was well played, Chris, you know. Um, and Nina, I'll come to you um, next. I mean, you know, it's, it's going to be a miss to, to, to look back at 20 years of this wonderful show about just talking about Michael uh, Quick and what an incredible talent he was and what he brought to the role of, of Omar. I just wonder if you could just speak quickly just about his, just 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 what a wonderful performing was and the kind of legacy he leaves behind and what he brought to this wonderful show. You know, what I remember about Michael on the show was just his... Um... His, his, his joy at being at, at work every day. You know, he really loved um, the camaraderie. He was, <clears throat> excuse me, he was um, really great at mentoring younger casts. At times he was paired with, um, with people with a lot less experience and he was just so generous and, um, and, and, and helpful um, with them. That's, that's mostly what I remember. Mm -hmm. I, think, I, I was just going to add, I think Michael in some ways uh, was happiest when he had a lot of work to do. 
And David, I don't know, I mean, it's the show's you know, obviously 20 years old. Can you, do you still see the imprint of it now in, in, in new shows today? Do you, do you ever sit down and watch a new series and you can recognise your own influence? Or is that quite a hard thing to, to judge? I, I mean, listen, you know, there's a lot of TV being made. That's great. I happen to write TV. Nina happens to produce TV. The idea that, 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 that they can't get enough content is a good thing for the industry and for, and for, our, um, and for who we happen to be. Um, I think probably the truth is that there's this, you know, there's the same percentages of what is good or great TV and what is TV and what is not good TV is probably about the same as when there were three, three, three or four channels. Mm. Um, and I think basically uh, there hasn't, you know, there's this notion of a golden age. I mean, the only thing that happened that we happened to luck into was we were there right at the moment that cable outlets without advertisers and without the need to placate advertisers were giving away hours of, of television to people who wanted to tell a story. And suddenly you didn't have to bring people back after every commercial and you didn't have to tell an uplifting story uh, that might, you know, if, if you veered into some darkness, you were going to lose viewers and, you know, you weren't subject to the same um, market pressures. So all of a sudden we were like cut loose to tell a grown up story. I'm not sure that was because we were deeply innovative or if it was because the, 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 the medium was changing. The medium, there, there was this moment of the medium allowing for us. And the truth is, you have to credit uh, Tom Fontana and Oz with being the first in through the door at HBO to create that, that culture of watch us counter program network TV. Here's a, here's a very dark show about a prison that wouldn't be anywhere else except on HBO. And that was that was a revelation. That was uh, that was the that was the pathfinder for the Sopranos and for us. And um, I mean, I think we took advantage of it. And I think if I, if I would credit us in terms of storytelling with doing one thing well, it's just simply the idea of having of making it into a novel, of having every episode connected, believing that because of the new dynamic of you know they're showing this ten times a week or later on they're issuing DVD box sets or uh, uh, stream. It didn't, we didn't know of streaming. We didn't know of box sets, but we knew they were showing it 10 times a week when we started. And so we were like, well, if they don't catch it Sunday, maybe they'll see it Monday or Tuesday or Thursday. Uh, let's just bank on them watching every episode. We, we, you know, we weren't thinking of them binging it or any of that, but, but we just thought we could get away with telling one singular story um, for an entire season. And really one singular story over the course of five tied mm -hmm. to tethered together and not just doing a series of short stories uh, of episodics. And that has become the prevalent model in television, in television drama anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think for the better, because, you know, that form of storytelling is, is captures people's imaginations. So mm -hmm. we were right place, wrong time. And then when we had the opportunity, I think we did well with it. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, not just for speaking to me today, but for, <laughs> the hours of fantastic television you've brought into mine and so many well, people's lives. Cheers. I'm, I'm glad it landed. Yeah. It <laughs> <It's the best. laughs> Cheers. Thank you so much, guys. Much Thank appreciated. You. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.